Hello my lovely art lovers! Ever since I've made that video where I've put together a sketchbook, I've been getting questions about sketch pads, art diaries, drawing books and so on. Today I want to address these questions. At the end of the day, why does it matter what you use? And what do sketchbooks have to do with artist diaries? What's so important about them and how a simple art diary can impact your whole art practice? And of course, if you talk to any artist, they will tell you their own specific way of what they like to use their books for. But I will tell you that there are two main categories of sketchbooks. Okay, so if you think that the only difference between all of these items is paper and size, you of course are all wrong. The truth is that they each have their own distinct purpose. One category is for sketching and another one is a diary. And this is where a lot of people confuse the two, sometimes mix them together. And this is where the trouble starts. By the way, you guys, this is not a regular video. This video contains a clue, a clue for my patrons, a clue to help them win a prize. Now, we do play all sorts of different games on Patreon, along with lots of extra videos and things like that, that you'd be able to find if you go and check it out. And I do monthly giveaways and those games that we play are a lot of fun. So. For those of you who are patrons, make sure to pay close attention. There is a clue in this video, okay? Okay, guys, let's get on with more art diary stuff. Now, let's look at the first category, books for sketching. You will be able to find them in abundance in all sorts of art shops and stationery shops. They mainly differ by size and by the quality of paper that's in them. If you are looking to create watercolor sketches, depending on the size, maybe you want A4, A3, something little like this, um, you can find something that suits you. Of course, prices are different depending on the quality of paper and so on and so on. You can find the most amazing handmade books and all sorts of stuff. So here I have a little book that you might remember from some of my previous videos that I used for sketching. Now this is quite a small book and it's also cream paper so I like to use it for uh, pencil sketches, pen sketches, sketches with white ink and I like to take it with me when I go somewhere just because it's so small. So uh, this is a perfect little book to take with you. Paper is also thick enough to use it for um, washes, you know, like quick watercolor washes and things like that. It's not 100% watercolor paper, but it works for what it works for. Now, another book, because this is the one that you probably have seen me make in the, one of the YouTube videos. Now, this is the one that I've made that contains different types of paper. This is something that I couldn't find in the shops. And the uh, cool thing about this as well is that it's not, you know, it, it's bigger, but it's uh, not too big where it becomes really bulky and hard to take with you. It's still something suitable, you know, to take along with you. And it is still a book in the shape of a book. Now you can also, by the way, all of these things, these are all, I think I've done videos about all of these sketches, some on Patreon and some on YouTube. So you can, if you look through, you'll be able to find videos on those as well. You can also find books in the art shop that are designed to be taken with you. And they're usually called blocks. Now this one here is a block of hot pressed finish watercolor paper. I had it for a while. The good thing about these is that, especially if they're smaller, this is, well, it's, A3, it's about A3 size, so it's, it's still okay, it's still doable to take with you, especially if, if you don't like traveling light. Um, and what it does have is that it has this thick glue on, uh, sometimes they have it on all sides. This specific one has them only on two sides, so this side here and this side here. What this glue does 
is it holds your paper in place so you don't need to worry about using clips or it flying away or anything like this you don't need to think about attaching a tape for example on the sides to hold it down you can just open it up and work on this when you're done and your drawing is dry you can just see like this one's already coming apart here you can use like a palette knife or something like this and just just you know remove the piece of paper they are usually a little bit more expensive than just your normal sort of uh, um, booklets and they usually do contain good quality artist paper but you do need to check because different brands do different things and quality of paper can vary as well just like the heaviness of the paper for these things so again these ones are called painting blocks you can also find things like this now these are not very suitable to hold as your uh, workbook these are rather great as you know something that you might like to keep all your drawings and you can it's quite easy to tear them you know off the paper pieces of paper you know cut it up to needed size i love to use this paper for drawing um, but it only has glue on one side so again this is great for sketching but it's not really a workbook as such and this is where a lot of people confuse those things you know when i say okay you need to bring a workbook and they bring something like this it's not a workbook it's paper it's it's you know paper maybe put an album you can you know call it whatever you want but a sketchbook is something where you can keep things in it so it's not designed for paper to be you know taken out uh, for you to use paper as paper a proper sketchbook whether it's for watercolor for pencil or whatever is usually made like a little book so see here it's got this sort of a book binding thing going on and what you want to do with something like this is you want to keep it as a journal but in a way as your drawing journal so again we're not getting into the diary thing this is we're going into journaling now so you are going through and you're sketching through different ideas perhaps there's something that you're thinking through maybe something for your artwork maybe something that you have seen and it's inspired you and you just want to 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 drop it down or um, like for me for example see i'd be working through on larger artworks and then i'd have something like this lying around that i'd be sketching things to um you know just just to sort of brainstorm really uh where i'm keeping um you know different ideas and things like that but this is still drawing so this is still drawing out things rather than working on a diary kind of stuff so again this is a journal not a diary okay so yeah lots of different sketches so you can see this is just me thinking through things and and so on also these things are great for if you want to approve your sketching for example and you don't want to be you know sitting down every time perfectly because you know i mean who's got time to sit down and allocate two hours every day i mean if you do it's amazing but you know many people don't but if you still want to be sketching and drawing because remember every little bit counts books like this are great because then say you can have it sitting in your living room for example or next to your computer and when you're relaxing watching something you can just open this up you know grab a pencil and just draw things maybe something that's sitting in front of you your cup of coffee that you're drinking or something like that so this is what these things are great for uh, you don't want to tear each artwork out and have it as a separate artwork like in those previous books that i showed you but instead this is something that you want to keep all your sketches together in one place but these are still just sketches here's another example of this this is from i think oh, it says 2000 on it so this is a really old one as well uh, that i've had Ooh, cat here i wonder where that's from <laughs> um things that i've been um practicing like i remember i just went through this thing of wanting to learn how to paint um, different types of fabric and stuff like this and i would go through you know i'd go in the galleries and, and and work there with this little thing and work from images and and you know copy other artists work now remember you can't copy other artists work and sell those things or pretend that they are the original artworks by those artists but if you zooming in or if you're just doing a sketch and if you are saying that this is from this artwork then yes that's absolutely fine and you're not selling them so yeah so always keep um 
copyright laws in mind when you're doing things like that. So I did all of these when I was a student. I was just, you know, learning how to do things. Um, so yeah, and you see how this is again, this is not a diary, but it is a um, sketchbook, which is more like a journal. So every day or every week I would go in and I would sketch something and I would study something and I would, you know, something that I would want to try maybe like a different technique. So the good thing about this paper is that it's not very expensive. It's not cotton paper. It's just um, cellulose, but at the same time, it's still thick enough to handle water mixable materials, but also not too bad for the drawings as well. So you see lots of different sort of a brainstorming, um, different ideas and so on. Okay, so this is the one group, okay? And that group is divided into journals you want to take with you when you're on the go sketching, you know, like watercolor sketches and things like that. Pads of paper that you might like to, again, either take with you, work at home, in the studio or whatever, but they are designed for you to take out the pieces of paper once you've finished drawing or painting. You can take them out and have them as separate artworks. And of course, you can have another a sort of a, like a workbook where you're doing your sketching, whether you're training to get better at something, whether you're working through different ideas. Um, so these are great. Now, I have the next lot of the journals. And this other lot, it's coming over here. This other lot is what I call an art diary or artist's diary. It says it's much more private. Usually not many people get to see this. This is specifically for you. So if these ideas, maybe you're discussing these ideas with someone, or if you're studying, maybe this is something that you want to be showing your teachers and so on and so on. Or maybe you want to show your friends. These ones are very kind of like a diary. And um, it is a good idea to keep them all. You see, I even put dates on them. So this is the one that I used from 2005 to 2009. Um, and so what these do is they, this is something, this is kind of a, how your brain works in a way. So, you know, have you, have you ever come across a saying that, oh, as soon as I've got a piece of paper out or a new fresh canvas, I can't draw or paint. I just get a blank mind. It's that fear of a blank page. It's called writer's block, um, artist's block, you, you name it. Any creative profession would have that. And these things are a perfect way to get around it. So what do you do with something like this? You would want to put any ideas that come into your head, you want to put them down, not just ideas, okay? You want to put any kind of, any kind of images that you like, that you might like to hang on to, or maybe there are, you know, some kind of um, newspaper articles, images that for some reason at that stage, at that time, somehow inspire you, maybe photocopies, maybe, you see, I don't even remember all of this, this is, as I said, from a long time ago, from 2005, but still, so these would have been the things that I would have been really looking at and maybe exhibitions I would have visited or, you know, things like that, that I would have wanted to keep little reminders of. So the cool thing about something like this is that anytime you get an idea that pops into your head, you can just drop it down in one of those books. And then when you do have that mental block, you can open it up and look through those ideas and it will really remind you about all the cool things that you came up with. So now you don't need to sit down and on the spot come up with something. You can just use some of your older ideas that, and usually guys, ideas come when you're doing something else. So if you're sitting down, you're like, I have to think of an idea. You're going to have the emptiest mind for ideas that you can possibly imagine. So with something like this, what you can do is you can just drop them down, say, I don't know, you're washing the dishes or you're eating. For me, I get a lot of ideas when I eat. I don't know why. Um, but uh, once you've got that down, you can come in and sketch them. So this is another a visual diary book. So this is another um, diary uh, from 1999. Um, this is when I was a student. <laughs> 
Okay, so I see all the different, different things that I would have been working on, all the different projects that would have been given, the live drawing, the things that I would have been reading, everything would have been in this, in this, um, in this book. So different sketches that I would have made, maybe I photographed them and put them in here, uh, different artworks that I did, different artists that I would look at, uh, different people I would be inspired by, and so on and so on. So these are the kind of a things so you see, I obviously liked an idea of having a thick um, board and I actually did go through a, um, like a, a series of works where I created a really thick edge. I'm actually coming back to that, but in a different way. So maybe different fabrics or feathers or like sort of a lavish kind of a thing, thinking of different ways to exhibit the artwork. So this is what I would, you know, this is what I would have, um, it depicted so I see different samples see this is like a velvet sample different yeah so everything that you would think of that's something that you're working on that you might want to add into your collection of ideas this is what you do um, another thing what these things are really good for and it is always good to have one continuously going Anytime you come across something, you know, like this, this ad, this is like a jewelry ad. I don't know from when, from probably a 2000, something like this. So I obviously really like the way these are photographed in here. Um, PowerShell, again, I went through a stage of, of depicting, you know, PowerShell quite a bit. So this is what it would have been, you know, like you find something, then you keep it in the air. And then when you do sit down to work, you open this up and all these ideas flood your brain all over again. And you don't have that blank page of staring at things and things like that. See, I've even done some little, um, like a little pouch with different things in here. So, oh, some photocopies of my old paintings. Oh my goodness. Again, guys, this is from a long, long time ago. I don't look at these very often, but I do keep them all because they do come in handy sometimes. And even just to see the development of your art, of what happens and, you know, how it develops and so on. So yeah, lots of different things, different things that I like, different things, maybe visually that you like. Uh, again, maybe a, a show, I remember I, was, I went to this show. Um, and you know, you want to keep these things. See again, thinking through different designs. I remember the show I did as well. So things like that, they're really, really great. You know, like little things that you see and you think, oh, this is great. This can be interesting in the work, but then you forget about it. Like by the time, say, you get home, um, if you thought about it when you were on a bus, for example, when you get home, you, you forget about it. And this is when little things, really little things come in handy. It's always a good idea to have something on hand, little like this, like this is tiny. This is, this is like A6 maybe size. So, yeah, so you see here, um, I would be like, I would have this in my bag, for example. And then if I'm, I don't know, somewhere in a supermarket and I think of a cool idea or I'm on the bus in the car, I'm waiting for someone or, I'm, you know, it doesn't matter. And something really interesting pops into your head. You want to open it up and do a very quick sketch. And I don't know if you know much about me working, but you see this cool idea that popped into my head. And then later on, I actually made it into a painting. So of course, from this to the painting, there would have been a lot of other stages as well of process, but these are, these are really, really great to have on hand, to be able to sketch. And you want to make it as comfortable for yourself as, as possible. If every time you have to grab something, you have to walk two stories down, say downstairs, if you're living in a three story um, unit or something like that, you want to make sure that you've got these things lying around everywhere. You want to make sure that you have one in your backpack, maybe um, you want to, you know, really make it easy for yourself, for yourself to carry on working even when you are not working. You see what I mean? I, you are not working on creative ideas. And this is when the brightest, the greatest ideas that would pop into your head and they, you will you completely forget about them. But even just opening these now and, and, and just, you know, reminiscing about, oh my goodness, yes, this and that. And I went through this whole like three months of really focusing on trying to get this perfect or that perfect. And so this is my current book. I've had this one for about 12 years now. 
and you can see how it's all getting really old and stuff and so again i would have been see like ripping and everything um so i would have been collecting different things that i might like different images and and so on and so on and thinking through different ideas you see so it's it's one of those things where you can create your own little personal space this is your personal space this is not something that you share with other people i am sharing it with you guys okay but this is not something that you would that you would be showing other people this is something for yourself these things don't have to look perfect you don't have to draw through everything you can write things you know put an arrow and and, and write things down these things are your own internal artistic turmoil that's happening and rather than turning each one of these ideas into a finished artwork. This is somewhere where these ideas get to live. They live here and they, some of them sort of a die off or some of them evolve into something else. Some of them uh, might pop up, pop up in an unexpected way and so on. Like this, when I was thinking through this, I never actually did this artwork, but it did pop and pop up later a small part of an artwork so you see this obviously I've been thinking through things so this would have been about 12 years ago when I started this um, also these things are great to have um, as reminders of the artworks that you've done so you see what I do also is I photograph my artworks and then I print them out it doesn't have to be super high res or whatever you just want to print them out and you want to stick them on and then you want to keep um, uh, you know information about the size of the artwork, title, maybe when you did that, you know, the month and the year when you did that, some kind of notes that you want to put on, maybe describing this artwork or something like that. So that way you can keep everything that you have done in one place. So this is for me, it works perfectly where I've got little ideas that pop into my head. Also different cool things that I find. See, this is like an envelope, the inside of the envelope. And I just absolutely love this pattern. So I cut it up and stuck it on here. And this is something that I would have seen maybe in the newspaper article. So obviously this is something probably that intrigued me. Um, so different, different things. Um, see lots of different, whatever this is, stickers see ads ads you know sometimes you can find something you know like a butterfly or something like this that you really like or like having the red um, eyeball or something you know and so these are all just different different things artworks that I've done and so on so um, yeah from years ago some of these are from years ago um, whenever I get commissions and things like that as well these would be the things I'd be thinking through so see you in separate pieces of paper that I just Put in there for different things. See, doing little um, post-it notes. Obviously, I didn't have one of these next to me. The ideas would have struck when I was uh, somewhere else. So I had to grab some post-it notes. There's some more. Um, and just so this is again as I said this is not something that you would be showing someone unless you know like me I'm telling you you know with the process that I go through these are just different different things that um, pop into your head and it doesn't mean that they will all evolve into a, an artwork they may not evolve into an artwork they may evolve into an artwork years later they may become just an idea on their own yeah so to keep these um you know printed out uh, little images um here in the book the best way i find to do it is with the um, double-sided tape uh, i mean you can use other things glue sticks work quite well too but um the problem is that they over time like you know as i said i've kept these books for like years and years just this book alone has lasted me for 12 years and i've been sort of really slack of putting these in just with everything that's been going on lately so um so i need to catch up now before i start my next book so what i usually do is i just get a piece of double-sided tape you don't need that much one or two this one's quite a long one so i'll do two little pieces 
And the main thing that what you want to do is you want to make sure that whatever whatever paper you print this on is a little bit thicker than your regular printer paper. And the reason for that is when you do use um, double sided tape, uh, over time it does yellow. So I'm but I'm sure you can probably find some acid free uh, double sided tape, but I would imagine it would be super expensive. Or you can use, you know, those um, photo dots and things like that. But again, as I said, they are much more expensive overall. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the paper that you are, you know, using to print these on can handle ink well. So something like photo paper um, would probably give you no problems at all. Even the thinner kind of photo paper would do quite well. So these are the images from the artworks that I did at the end of last year. So a little bit less than a year ago and I still haven't had a chance to stick it all in here with the move that I had and then with uh, health emergency and everything like this I've been as I said I've been most likely than usual in keeping these records and so once you do this this was going to stay in your workbook for you know ever and ever so you can um, anytime you need to find information about an artwork that you've done uh, you can open up your book for that year and uh, find it there this has been a great book. Uh, as I said, it lasted for 12 years. This is the longest I've ever had a book. We usually, because I use smaller ones, you know, like a sort of A5 size. This is more of an A4 size. So you see what I mean? You see what I mean about the difference between the sketchbooks and, and you know, the amazing uh, variations that you can get them in for all sorts of things and all sorts of purposes from using them like separate paper sheets to sketching them and keeping your ideas together or your drawings and, and paintings to diaries and this is where the difference is and that's why it's so important and I know a lot of artists don't hold a book like that and they really miss out uh, hopefully I've outlined all the reasons why you really want to make sure that you keep a, a, an artist's diary. Now another thing that I can tell you is that when you are just starting up and you just get yourself a diary, the first sheet you fill in and you feel great. And then because you're not used to keeping up with it, you are not going to keep up you know, adding things or remembering to do those things. That's why it's so important to make these things as comfortable and as convenient for yourself as possible. Make sure that your diary sits somewhere where you have really easy access. Make sure you have a pencil right next to it or maybe even attached to it in some way. So that way you will become so accustomed to sketching your ideas down and then when you do need to find out what you want to do you are not stuck for ideas and you have your whole life artistic life documented in these cool little books i would not suggest having one bigger than a4 size you don't the a3 is just too big you still want it to be something that if you are going somewhere is easy to grab and carry with you so a4 a5 size is perfect at least that's that's how i feel about it i mean of course everyone's might find a different way but anyways now that this old diary is finished bye bye old diary thank you so much for letting me have and all all of your pages now it's time for my new diary so let's see how this one's going to go. Hello, my new book. I wonder what kind of adventures we're going to get on to with you. I know, guys, I know this is a little bit of an unusual video. But remember, this video holds a clue for my wonderful patrons as part of the game that we are playing on Patreon. Don't forget to check out Patreon yourself if you're still not a patron. And I as always want to say a big, big thank you to my wonderful, wonderful patrons who are supporting this channel and we are having a lot of fun on Patreon as well. So make sure to head over there and check things out. 
and I look forward to seeing you in the next video very very soon.